When you want to blur a background, whether it's noisy or just for creative use, you might be tempted to select the background first and then apply a live Gaussian blur filter. The Gaussian blur is only applied to the selection. Even though this might work for a blur with a low radius, it fails miserably when the blur radius gets larger. The main reason is the processing order. The Gaussian live filter is applied to the image first, then its mask is applied. As the applied blur also blurred the subject, the subject blends into the background and you get this unwanted halo effect. To solve this, let's make a copy of our layer first by duplicating it. On this duplicate, we can now apply the selection as a mask. Let me turn off the layer below so we can see better what is happening. Now with the layer selected, we can apply the blur and of course we have to make sure to preserve the alpha. As you see, we get this nice sharp edge where the subject will be. If I would lower the blur layer, it will get applied first. And notice how the subject colors bleed into our layer, creating the halo. Let's restore the blur position and turn on the original layer below. Awesome! It could be that the transition between the subject and the background could be too harsh, so let's fix that. I will make another copy of the original image and move this to the top. I will command click on the mask of the background and invert the pixel selection. This will make a selection of our subject. From the select menu, we can now use the outline function and convert the current selection to an outline. Usually, a value of 2 pixels would work well, but it really depends on your image resolution. Next, a feather with 0.5 to feather this outline. We can now apply this again as a mask. This already smoothened the transition, but we can make it even more smooth by adding a Gaussian blur filter to this layer. And with Preserve Alpha turned on, we can slightly increase the radius until we have a butter smooth transition. Keep in mind, just like explained earlier, the Gaussian blur should be applied after the mask. Let's have a look at the before and the after. Pretty awesome! If you're using this feature a lot, you can also easily transform these steps into a macro. Let me switch to another document and make a very quick selection. It's going to be quick and dirty. Now with the foreground selected, I will apply my macro. That is quite interesting and quick, isn't it? A blurred image used with other blend modes adds mostly a glowy effect and let's use that information. I will add a box and apply a gradient to it. The color is not so important. Only the opacities of the begin and the end we need to set. I will move this box above the background blur layer and select both of them to make a group. I will change the blend mode of the box with a gradient to erase and this will now act as a mask. Let's fix the opacities in the gradient so the effect is being applied from the top. And now time to change the blend mode of this group. Let's change it to color burn. Awesome! By changing the opacities in the gradient, we can control the effect and at the end we get this amazing result. Now let me turn off the blur so you can see what I mean by blur bringing in glow. With the blur, we get a much more dreamy end result. Just awesome. Thank you for watching again and until the next video.